All right, well, I was finally able to get Mike Tramp on the show. I think I've been trying for that since I started this thing, and now it's happened, and it was worth the wait. He's got a new album out now called Songs of White Lion, and it's a reimagining of his songs from his time with White Lion. Uh, It comes out April 14th, and then he will tour to support it. And we're going to talk about the new album, White Lion, his solo career, his band Freak of Nature, and much, much more coming right up. Well, welcome, Mike Tramp. This is so exciting. Thank you for doing this. I I was telling uh, my buddy Troy, your old drummer, uh, it only took me like five years to get you on the show. So thank you for doing that. Oh, this. boy. Why, it sure was not my fault. <laughs> no, I know. Pro, no, it's just like, I don't know. It's it's tough. You, you got to have something to promote. Uh, I got to know the right people. And uh, yeah, when I saw your name came up that you had a new album, I was like, great. I'd love to have him on the show. Talk about the new stuff. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the new album. It's called uh, Songs of White Lion. And it's what you've done is you've reimagined the songs of uh, White Lion, basically, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, how many way can you de- describe a re-recording of all songs? Yeah, um, you know, I, I've taken, you know, I've taken, you know, the recordings and the songs from, that was recorded in, in the mid 80s. And uh, without disrespecting anything, you know, they're not standing the test of time in in high fi- high fidelity in, in today's world. And at the same time, also since I was um, 26 then, and now I'm 62, I flipped over the numbers. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of like the songs to sound like where I am today. Right. So, and you don't have the big hair and the spandex and doing the kicks on stage. It's different. It's a different show. No. Yeah. That, that, that would really put me in, 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 in grave danger. Um, <laughs> the, the songs, are, the songs are almost note for note. Um, uh, I've changed the key of the songs because obviously I can't sing that high anymore. I don't want to sing that high anymore. I like, for, I like, I mean, I, I'm, in lack of better excuses, I wanted that when I walk out on stage, I want everything to sound like it is today. I'm standing there. People look at me as as, as a man and and my face. And I, I kind of like the voice to follow that, that, that you know, it, it's not like you're standing up there and you're totally out of place or you're wearing something that shouldn't be there and things like that. It, it's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. So this is how the songs will be performed live as well. Correct. Uh, at least when I when I play with full band, the, the the tour that I'm doing in America throughout the May will just be a power duo uh, because the venues we're playing and the fees we're getting allow us to do just that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So talk about your uh, guitar player that you're working with, Marcus Nand. Tell me yeah, about well, where you meet Marcus him. And I've been together in. in been great friends when when he got to play with me back in 94 and we our friendship had just gone stronger by the year and we knew that there would come a day when uh, we eventually would would end up doing this um in 2019 we did about it we did a european tour together which really proved that you could actually go out and do what we do together and still make people feel like you know they got a show um without it also taking it too seriously. I mean, you know, we're two electric guitars and we have, you know, we have a little bass and, and drum loop behind us that allows us to, you know, to, you know, get the the songs grooving and, and, you know, people feel the beat in the room, you know, but besides that, it's just, it's just a lot of fun and a lot of smiles and a lot of connection with the audience, things like that. You know what is, it's adjusting to the situation. It's as simple as that, you know. It's it's not necessarily uh, been on my wish list that that's where I would end up, but it is where I am. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make make the best out of it. Yeah. So if you had the offer to play like some of these festivals and things, I know you've done Monsters of Rock cruise and other things like that before. If you had the money offered to you, you would use the full band if you could, though, right? Oh yeah, I mean, in 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 all through the summer in Europe, I mean, from from June till uh, till September, we're doing all the, not all, but we're doing most of the the big rock festivals, 
and that will be with a full band. Um, and I'm aiming at the same thing in America. Um, it's just a matter of, 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 of when that time will allow. And maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to just use this year to establish this show because it is in many ways a show. It's not a career that's going to grow. These will be the songs that I will be playing next year too. When I do the show, it's the songs of wide line show. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause when I looked at your set list, a lot of the ones, the shows that you did in Europe, there was a lot of shows where you didn't do any white lion songs. Although yeah. most of the ones in America, it was very white lion heavy. So now it is still going to be more heavy in, in both Europe and America. It's, it's, it's only going to be the songs from the album and, and maybe a couple of songs that we didn't record. Oh, of White Lion songs or solo? Yeah, it's only White Lion songs. Only White Lion. Wow. Songs of White Lion. Okay. So that's the whole. And so it's kind of like you found a loophole in a way because you don't want to do the White Lion reunion. But uh, I mean, you're, it, it is different. It's not White Lion because Vito's not in it and you're, they sound different. You know, you are you are um, right on. I mean, the thing is that I have pushed the limit and I've tested the legal boundaries, you know, and I've <laughs> now when I look back, the few times where I have stood under the White Lion banner, not Tramp's White Lion, but somehow um, the, the show was sold as White Lion, stuff like that, I have not felt comfortable because it isn't White Lion. White Lion was Vito Brada, Mike Tram, James Lomenzo, and Greg D'Angelo on drums. Um, now it's Mike Tram playing the songs of White Lion as close to the originals as possible. Oh, okay. So, but, but I mean, it's going to be sounding different because like when the children cry, you've got a piano and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but you know, but we're not going to have a piano on stage. The reason why I used, I, I did the version with the piano for the album is because the original version already exists. There's no need, to, uh, you can't really change that song much more than it is. On the Pride album, it's Vito and I, nobody else. And now it's just me and the piano play on that to finish up with that song. But that song is, is, is uh, when we play that song live, we're still playing it with the guitar. Yeah. No, it's cool that you picked a uh, cry for freedom. Is that, that's kind of the first single, right? Yeah. I mean, a cry for freedom uh, is a great song that Vito and I wrote, but a couple of the songs that I've taken from the big game album were sort of unfinished because we really did not have the time when wide line went in to record that album after almost two years on the road. Uh, we Vito and I especially would have definitely needed man, a good half year off so we had the time. So we got rushed into the studio. And while, you know, the money was coming in from these, uh, you know, successful two years, both with millions of sold albums and 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 hundreds of, of big shows, we're almost forgetting about that we're recording a record. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's interesting. Because, that, yeah, that song is it sounds really great. I love what you've done with it, too. And it's interesting that that didn't become I a did. bigger hit. The song is really home now. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. So with with the, when you look back at the White Lion stuff, like, um, is there something that you uh, like you contrast your time then? I heard you talking about the old days and how you were really hungry back then. And uh, do you still have that hunger now, like to prove to people that you can still do this and that you're, you know, you're doing it, you're just at the top of your game? Or is the work ethic the same as it was back then? Well, I mean, my worth my work ethics has never changed. I mean, I I don't ever go half half into anything, and I mean anything. And uh, now I think now I own and control the songs. Back then, the songs owned and controlled me. So it's almost like if you get a second chance to do something, you're doing it with all the knowledge from what was right or what was wrong the first time and so we're obviously going out on stage to really uh respect the music uh there'll be less splits less jumps from the drum riser you know etc cetera, etc cetera. less changing of jackets etc et 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 you know but really really performing the music i i know it's come something completely different but um I, I'm almost uh, good to say that um, two years ago when I went to see Eagles in, in, in Denmark playing, I witnessed the best concert I've ever seen. 
and the band, you know, obviously a, a couple of members aren't there anymore. Um, but they stood there on the white light. They didn't really move more than 10 inches. They played the music. They sang the music. They played some of the greatest songs ever written. I really did not need fireworks or or, or somebody licking at the camera. And I <laughs> Rock and roll were like that in the 80s. Now it's actually, if you want to get back up on stage, at least perform the music great. Do you think that that's just also with time as you're getting older and things, that's just natural part of progression? Or if you could go back in time and go back to the 80s, would you do anything differently? Would you stylistically, creatively, or any of those kinds of things, any changes that you would, obviously the financial stuff, and we can get into that business stuff later, but just stylistically, is there anything you would have done differently? No, I, I really don't think so because, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're saying about because financially and stuff like that, now having all the knowledge of when you sign a contract of how much trouble it can, can create 35 years later on. But everything that I did there was from a continuation from what my heroes had started in me. I mean, from Freddie Mercury to David Bowie, and then when David Lee Roth came about, then I sort of saw that the stage is a place you perform on. And the rehearsal room is where you stand still with your pants hanging down your ass. But when you're on stage, you're like a bullfighter. You know, you, you it, it's, you're performing, man. Yeah. So, and everything we did was part of the times. Um, you can, you know, I don't think that any uh, players or artists of the 80s have ever, you know, sort of regretted what they did. We also followed what the industry was like, you know, goading us to do. You know, MTV wanted the flash. MTV wanted those kind of videos. Nobody wanted to be a black and white suicidal video when somebody sat in the corner, you know, looking down. They wanted full action all the way. And we gave them that. And they slammed the door in our face in 1990. Ask Kip Winger that. Uh, You know, I mean, so we had a great time. We had the time of our life. The 80s were phenomenal concerts. People were happy. I remember when I when I went to a concert like in, in 92 and 93, man. And, you know, I, I, I look at the guy next to me and says, man, are the road crew still doing sound checks? He says, no, no, that's a band. Says, what do you mean, the band? Why do they have the back to the audience? Oh, that's just their attitude. And I just go, okay, I rest my case. Yeah, but okay, but what if you could have done it differently? Would you you wouldn't do like more like maybe a Tom Petty or like a U two like maybe tone down that because that's I, I, what you want to do I, now. I wasn't, right? I wasn't. I wasn't. I hadn't matured to that. I mean, some of my heroes made uh, the greatest albums when they were twenty years old. Yeah, I think I made my greatest albums after I turned fifty. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm loving this the solo stuff. I'm just now discovering it, which. I don't know what took me so long, but I'm like, wow, these are really well-written songs. They're catchy. They're very melodic. And I think that's what uh, drew me to White Lion as well. I, I just love mel- melodic songs like that that are catchy. And that's the same stuff as your solo. I, you know, I mean, I do appreciate that because that is the combination of Vito Brada and Mike Tramp. Mike Tramp is a campfire songwriter and Vito Brada was a, was a guitar genius. And when we met in the middle, you know, he took the simple chords from my songs and and you know and then we turn it into the eighties. But when you take Mike Tramp away from the bands mm. and put a telecast or acoustic guitar in his hand, you get you know without you know um, dissing my own stuff, you get Petty, you get Springsteen, you get Mellencamp, Camp, you get Neil Young, songwriters of that kind of stuff, and that's who I am by myself. Mm. Uh, but you know, and at times I've been out with those with 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 my band, the band of brothers that play that kind of stuff. And then when we attempt to play White Lion songs, it's Neil Young interpreting White Lion, and that doesn't work neither. So I've now built a very very high wall that when I do White Lion, I wear tight pants, and when I do my tram solo, they're a little bit looser. <laughs> Will will you ever do the white lion tight pants again, like just a one-off or something? Would you and Vito? I know that 
because uh, he seems to be open to doing a show, maybe not a full tour, but like a one-off for charity or something. I, you, you're, you're the third today that said that he sure, seems to. Of course. I think it's that old Eddie Trunk uh, interview that's rehashed where Vito says, I don't close the door. I speak yeah. often to Vito and things like that, and him and I are on real good terms. I don't think either, either of us want a white lion reunion. Okay. I also do not believe that a white lion reunion would be an honest reunion uh, where actually the four guys would come into the rehearsal room with, with wide open arms saying, damn, it's good to be back. Hmm. So, so unless, you know, you know, the, the big hotel in Dubai offers us a million dollars, like, you know, they offered one of the guys some kiss. And then he says, well, if I bring the other f three uh, for four million, will you play? Yeah, OK. Yeah, I mean, but that's not to say that maybe there wouldn't come the opportunity where Vito and I would do something. But I think both of us would want to do something new with the knowledge of what we have, what kind of song would we write today? Hmm. Yeah. Can he still play? How does he, I know his hand hurt and he, he can only do classical guitar. Can he play? So would you do something acoustic more with him or is, can he, is he fully healed from his hand injury? Well, there's a lot of part of my body that hurts every day. And things like that. <laughs> I, I can't speak for Vito. Vito will speak when Vito needs to speak, you know, yeah. um, uh, uh, I know, I know that he he is playing, and he's also you know uh, taking the, uh, trying some other things and stuff like that. You know, he will. I will not force anything out of him. He will tell me when he will tell me. Yeah, no, that's cool. And you guys are still friends. And and has he heard the the new album? Has he given you the, his blessing? No, I don't know because the album's not really out yet. So when it's out there, I'll, I, you know, I'll send it to him with with a box of chocolate. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. Like, so you uh, you met Vito in was it eighty two or yeah eighty two? Um, so yeah, back in that New York scene, can you talk about that for a minute? I'm always fascinated by music scenes. I'm actually from Seattle and I grew up in the '90s, but um, the, the New York rock scene is kind of interesting to me too. You got you had Twisted Sister and. Danger, danger, and anthrax, and all these. Uh, well, yeah, okay, let's let's just forget danger, danger in this talk. They were not really part of that scene. Oh, they were, you you know, had Bruno in your band, didn't you? Yeah, well, don't ask Vito about that. He, Bruno came in, and he came in the out out in through the outdoor. You know, uh, <laughs> for a very short while. You know, okay. and, you know, I met him a few times, and I says, I you know, like easy on the CV. You know, you weren't in the band that long, but. <laughs> Uh, the honest, the honest um, description of New York was that you know when Vito and I met and we were trying to, we were obviously looking towards California. We were obviously looking to you know at Van Halen. We were obviously looking at at Motley Crue and and the first the first wave of of those bands, and there were almost nothing like that in New York. There was almost nothing like it was like you know New York was was damn tough. You mm -hmm. did not hang out on the street like you did on Sunset Boulevard in a little T-shirt. The girls are great and stuff like that. It was still tough, and we were we were banned out of an industrial area in Brooklyn. Mm. No life anywhere. We were had a massive rehearsal room in a cold basement underneath, you know, Brooklyn's biggest rock club that our manager owned. We, I mean, dude, we did not see much fun. We did not see much action of anything. We were rehearsing all the time, which is also in many ways why Vito and I wrote those songs. You know, I mean, of course, my 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 European background, I've grown up with a completely different awareness that there is a world where, you know, m most, you know, most of the guys I was playing with just kind of knew the Triboro, you know, area. And, 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 you know, and here I came talking about, you know, all kinds of stuff and just from, from how I grown up and we combined that stuff. I wasn't, even though there are a couple of songs, but I wasn't about to, to sing about all that, you know, 
sleazy stuff from the, all the other bands. It, it never interested in me. I, I, you know, I wanted, you know, Lady of the Valley, Cry for Freedom, When the Children Cry, a Little Fight, or, you know, If My Mind is Evil. I mean, you know, I wanted to write lyrics. Then today when I go out on stage, I don't really have a problem singing and keeping a straight face. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, and you had some musical background too, right? Weren't you in like, kind of like a boy band? Is that what you would call it? Yes, if you're from a boy band, you don't really have much musical background. <laughs> Well, singing at least, right? And the music no, business. I mean, no, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I left school when I was 15 and a half years old and, and joined a, 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 um, a rock band that were 10 years older than me. And, 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 you know, those first five years I was under the, on their wing. And, and, you know, so basically from the time I was 15 and a half, I lived in a grown man's world and I, I never had, you know, I never had those teenage years, uh, which most um, most people uh, um, have. It's like, you know, you know, first time I ended up in bed, man, it was with a mature woman. So it's like, it was just one of those kind of things. There are a lot of years lost in my life and stuff like that. You know, it's a price you have to pay. Well, wait, didn't you, when you are a rock star and you're in White Lion, you're touring with Kiss and ACDC, do you get to live out your teenage rock star fantasies then at least? but I never had any teenage rock star fantasies because I never had any fantasies of being, becoming a rock star. And it, it, it just came from one day to another. The second I got into my band, which was already a professional band, I took it deadly serious, you know, from day one on, I said, this is what I do. Um, so I've had, you know, I've seen it in, in, I've, I saw it in, in the, in, in my, my brother from white line and I've seen it through the, the last 30 years when I've toured the U S when, when there's a young band supporting me and stuff like that. And, 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 you know, their energy and, and, you know, all that stuff there, I, ne I didn't have that in the same way. You know, I, I was just driven by different things. Mm. I was driven by a lot about the knowledge, you know, uh, why everybody was partying. You know, I, I, I took much more interest in seeing how the stage and the PA and everything was built, you know, on the Aerosmith and ACDC to a, and, and, you know, today there's nothing that I don't know about everything that makes the world go around. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. And once in a while, when I had some free time, I went out to look at the girls too. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you not, when you're on tour with Motley Crue, like, I mean, I feel like that would be tough to, to keep it straight on, with those guys around. Well, first of all, I had to fight my way through Vince Neil and Tommy Lee, you know, to, you know, <laughs> about to take leftovers from them <laughs> oh that's funny no but the, yeah so the, going back to the business thing that that is interesting though like i heard this i gotta double check this with you uh you said something about you gotta let after the band is over you get this letter from the irs saying you owe basically almost like a million dollars in taxes this is crazy to me what happened there we got the same letter because we were represented by the same by, by the same uh the same um, uh, accountant, and 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 since Vito and I started the band and wrote the songs together and things like that, we made equal amount of, uh, of money and stuff like that. So we both got that same uh, letter, and I, I, you know, it, it. See, I don't have a problem. I'm the kind of guy that when you meet me, I reach out my hand and I give you my pin code. I I I have a uh, I'm real. It's really difficult for me to tell you. Uh, you know, lies are not the truth. So if you ask me about it, and by the time I go out and pick that letter up, my 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 first son is just born. I'm living in a guest house in this in San Fernando Valley. I have an old Chevy pickup truck uh, from '58 that I started with a screwdriver, and I have about twenty five hundred dollars in the bank. And I was I was a singer and the songwriter on White Lion. And then I opened this letter from from the IRS, and it's about I think it was like eight hundred seventy five thousand dollars. Crazy! And it took you twenty years to pay all that off. Yeah, so ba so basically, what most Americans, uh, you know, aware of is when the IRS go in and put a lien on your on your future earnings and stuff like that. So I think about probably after about three or four years, I actually had forgotten that I ever made any money. And then twenty years twenty years down the road, suddenly my 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 accountant who helps set this whole you know payment schedule and stuff like that down, he says, "You're clean today." You're done. Well, that's got to be a nice feeling. But still, at the same time, it's like 
you should have been collecting royalties during that time, not paying debts. That's insane. Yeah, but that royalty is the IRS collect the IRS collected for me. Right. So now do you get any royalties or is it now because of the record business you don't get anything? Well, I mean, you know, the big money was made back then. Now we just get something once in a while I get to change the, the tires on my car and and you know, you know, <laughs> change, you know, things like that. You know, the the you know, there's many ways of looking at it. I got paid for something I love. Okay, I'm not working in a coal mine or, or, you know, delivering the mail in the rain or things like that. The money that the IRS took, I'd never seen. They never were in my bank account. I never held them in my hands. It's almost like they didn't exist. Hmm. So it becomes easy to live with. I also come from a family who had nothing. I come from, I come from pretty close to poverty, and I've always existed much better at that level than the level of having, you know, too much money in the bank, because I'm still the same guy when I wake up in the morning. And, and, and it's how I've been touring for the last almost 30 years, you know, and, and these last 10 years in the U S that I've been touring, you know, I'm driving a rental car. I, I, I show up at the venue with a suitcase with t-shirts and, and, and the CDs and vinyls. And, and, and I meet and greet the people after for free and sell the t-shirts. You know, I do what's needed that day. And when you tell me I have to play Madison Square Garden, I'll be ready for that. Nice. So it's still music is still your full-time focus. You haven't had to like take on other jobs or other work or anything. No. Okay. Um, Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I was listening to, so I listened to your solo stuff and then I listened to, to freak of nature. T talk a little bit about that band. Cause I think that was like a missed opportunity for some record labels. Like I, I listened, I was like, this stuff sounds really good. And you still had the guitars and things. It's not like you went grunge. I know you went a little heavier, but I liked it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, that is actually what I call the highlight of my musical career. I, I mean, I've reached, I've reached that once again with some of my solo albums where I feel that, you know, the songs really are there. But Freak of Nature was built on the mistakes of White Lion. And uh, even, even though, you know, I mean, I've spoken with Vito about it before. I mean, him and I started the band and him and I were the songwriting team. And he never really felt that he should be writing with anyone else when i when i started freak of nature which was built on 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 all that i had the that i had made what i had in the bank at that time you know i we were five guys two guitar players you know bass drums and myself and we put up in a circle and from that first day on we wrote the songs there and each individual member took care of themselves and did not bother anybody else so it is it is the true it is a true uh uh product of a collaboration of five guys who wants to be together at that moment and it is those two albums are phenomenal rock albums um, with a lot of 70s, Thin Lizzy, UFO, uh, early Whitesnake attitude. Also, of course, with a little bit of some of the good sides of grunge, you know, some of the great Alice in Chains riffs and things like that. I mean, the, the heaviness, but obviously me singing and stuff like that. And already at that time, I started singing much different than it was in White Lion, you know. Um, much fatter voice and things like that. And it also became the reasons why it, I was so passionate about the band that the second I started, saw it just, you know, fall apart at the seams a little, which was very surprising to me. I said, you know what? These two albums and the two and a half years we've been together on touring has been the best time of my life. Wow. Leave it at that. And then shortly after that, I started writing my first solo album, Capricorn, which came out in, in 97. Wow. Well, have you ever thought of like with all this knowledge and experience that you have in the music business, have you ever thought of like either like mentoring a younger band or producing or, or writing a book to share this all? Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh God knows. I mean, has didn't Gene Simmons do a reality show? Didn't it didn't it Johnny Rodden? I mean, everybody does that. The thing is. I wouldn't be a, I mean, of course I have the knowledge of all those things, but 
I'm not going to be able to go in and produce a young band and 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 make that any bigger a chance for them getting you know record deal and succeed. The the recording industry or the music industry is a place that nobody recognizes anymore. Uh, you need people that has nothing to do with music to take you to the next level. You know, um, in that way, you know, in the '80s when when we went into the studios, I mean. The thing is, without taking anything away, don't uh, you know when White Lion went in to record the Pride album, that had been our live show for almost a year. Vito and I had written the songs. We didn't really need anyone to tell us who we were, and that's exactly where Michael Wagner fitted in. He put microphones uh, on the band, and then he said, "Let's eat," and then we recorded. You know, I mean, it's like he let the band be the band. He didn't go in and says, "Oh, you know, I need to change it so I can say I changed it." Mm. Yeah, no, he's. I think he's a brilliant producer. I love all his work. No, I mean, but today, you know, I mean, I don't think my tram would get any bigger success if some of my 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 favorite, you know, producers that are still alive came in and helped me do that album. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I reach that audience that likes what I do? Um, um, am I going to go out there and support John Mellencamp? Am I going out there with Neil Young, et cetera, et cetera? I can't go out and support Nickelback with my solo albums. I mean, you know, yeah. it's just it's just reality. And I have to face that reality too. Yeah, what about like teaming up with other similar uh, sounding artists? Like I know, like I don't know if you remember the, the band Bang Tango, but their guitarist, Mark Knight, I mean, he's kind of doing a similar thing to what you're doing. He's kind of doing singer-songwriter. Like, would you team up with somebody like him for a tour or, or a group or a project or something? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've done, I've done, I've done several shows with with both with my, with my friend Kip Winger. I've also done many shows together with John Karabi and stuff like that. We draw the same audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe that would that be you because you haven't set up the U.S. dates for this tour yet, right? Yeah, you know, we have we're, we're doing the whole whole month of May. It's already set up. Oh, okay. And so, but would you add more dates with uh, maybe like with Kip Winger or John Karabi or somebody like that? Um, you know, that's not really me. That's just you know, we have the same age, and so if 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 they if they need to to change the carpet in the house and stuff like that, they call the agent and say, "So I mean, can we play with Mike Tramp?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Well, hopefully, you'll hit Phoenix or somewhere I can drive to. I've never seen you live. That'd be amazing. Probably could be, be, you know, the second leg would probably take place more in 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 the end of the year because right now, you know, I have the whole summer in Europe mm. playing festivals with a full band so right now i'm just doing the power duo in america with um it on the northeast coast uh okay. with me. we're working on obviously we're working on, on on several things but also like i told you the songs of white line is a show that will go on it's it's not a promotion of an album the album it goes so long but you know this is more about to say when you see this poster that's what i do okay well cool i look forward to it What's that? He says, don't ask if I'm playing Wide Lion when it says it's on the poster. Yeah, no, I was hoping, but I'm hoping for maybe a couple solo or maybe a freaking nature song or something, something a little surprise, yeah, a cover. You know, that's something what fun. I've done the last eight American tours, you know. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I always end each episode promoting a charity. Um, and I know that you guys have kind of had some social causes with your, with your songs in the past. Is there a cause or a charity that you want to promote here at the end? Yeah, I'm going to do the, the Save My Tram charity. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what? I Wherever I can help where it makes a difference, I do. It's as simple as that, you know, and, and things like that, you know, you know, um, you know. It's it's things like that. I don't necessarily, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I made a pretty big deal that back in 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 eighty nine when I wrote Little Fighter with Vito and I wrote the li- the lyrics of for, you know in in tribute to the Rainbow Warrior, which was a was a, a fishing trawler that you know belonged to Greenpeace and the French government blew up in nineteen seventy eight. Um, I gave uh, a share of that song, Future Royalties, uh, to Greenpeace. So you know, I've done my share. No, that's really cool. I love that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for doing this interview. It was really eye-opening and uh, great stories, great stuff. I look forward to seeing you live. No, it's been my pleasure, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, just to remind people, the album comes out, Songs of White Line, out on April 14th. And I think Cry for Freedom is out now. 
they can hear that song and they can hear a sampling of the whole album on youtube as well right uh you know i'm i'm rally on youtube and stuff like that. yeah you know, well i heard it. i'll put it in the link so that people and i'll put your website and all that stuff you know you know better than i mean you know i, just, <laughs> I try to be really nostalgic you know and things like that you know uh you know i still use real sugar and things like that you know you know okay anyway so here here's my my you know calling thanks brother okay all right y'all like to get to it see you mike bye bye all right well i hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i did make sure to support mike by buying or streaming that new album and try to catch a show if you can follow mike on social medias to keep up to date uh, you can follow us on there as well we appreciate all your support your likes comments and shares on social media and youtube especially help us grow the show organically so that we can get great guests like mike tramp I appreciate all your support for the show and for the guests. Have a great rest of your day. Shoot for the moon. <laughs>